Hey everybody, um, this is Julie just popping on to do our little Q&A that we've been doing with our Kingdom Politics series. So uh, if you're just stopping by or if you're new, um, we are Resurrection City Church. We are a church in the Hamlin Midway neighborhood of St. Paul. And over the last a few weeks, we've been going through a sermon series that we're calling Kingdom Politics. So we are trying to answer the question of how we should engage with uh, faith and politics and what that should look like together uh, as we kind of deal with that. Hey, Andrea. Hey, everybody who's hopping on. It's good to see you. Um, so we're going to talk about faith and politics. We've been kind of taking questions from, questions can either come from the sermon or they could come from um, just general questions about how do I deal with this? How do I interact with the current political climate and knowing my faith, knowing what I believe, how should that impact, how should that interact with what's going on in the world? And we realized as we were planning the sermon series that there's a lot to that and there are a lot of questions that you could go after. And so we decided to do these Q&As as a way to uh, have a, more space to answer some questions and kind of go in depth in topics. So. If you missed last week's, we posted it on our YouTube channel. Um, it's also in our Instagram feed. Uh, Joel answered some really interesting questions about, you know, how do I, you know, do I, how should I weight different issues when I'm thinking about politics because of my faith? Um, yeah, there are just some other ones in there too. So I encourage you to go check that one out. Today I've just got one question. And the question is basically, how should I or any tips or any advice for engaging with friends or family who have different political beliefs than I do. And, you know, I think that this wasn't as big of a question in the past, uh, or maybe I just was naive and didn't realize how contentious it could get in certain things, but man, it seems like no matter who you are or what you believe, it is a contentious topic. And if you get into a conversation with someone who is not on the same page as you, it can be really challenging. And so I totally relate with this um, and I'm going to share some things that I feel like have been helpful for me to think about. And some of these things, I'll just be honest, are things that I'm still working on. Okay, these conversations can get difficult and I definitely don't have it all figured out. But here are some things that I think can be helpful um, or at least are good for us to think about and try to put into practice. So again, that question is just, how do I talk to friends or family who have different political beliefs than I do? And first of all, I just wanna say like, you should, that's great. I'm glad that you are thinking about talking with people who have different beliefs than you. Uh, if you were with us a few weeks back, we talked a lot about unity in the church uh, and just in general. And we talked about how you can't have unity without diversity. And so I hope that you have other people in your life who have different political beliefs than you. Uh, I think that's a really healthy thing. I think it's a really good thing. And so first of all, just great. I'm glad, I think you should do that. Second of all, uh, I have a few things. So well, I'll just give you the three things and then we'll kind of dive into them. One is approach it with humility and with hope. The second one is to speak the truth in love. And the third one is that it's not about winning, it's about serving. So the first one, humility and hope. I think these are two things that we have to make sure we have before we engage with anyone else, regardless of where they're coming from, regardless of how they're approaching it. Because if we don't have humility, we are automatically assuming that we're the right ones in this conversation and that we know all that there is to know and the other person is automatically wrong because we're clearly in the right. And that's not a helpful way to start any conversation usually. People can definitely feel that when they are in conversation with you and it can immediately put other people on the defensive. I know that when anyone approaches me that way, it's very hard for me not want to, to not want to be defensive in my response to them. So, and it's also just helpful for us to be humble because we don't have it all figured out. We don't have all the right answers. Uh, no party or person is completely perfect to, that we might have beliefs in. No 
uh, reasoning of our beliefs is probably entirely perfect because we're flawed, we're sinful, we're human. And that's just what it is to be human. And so we need to remember that. We need to have humility when we approach other people in those conversations. And I think just as important is that we need to have hope. And ultimately, our hope is in Jesus, and it's not in politics. We talked about this um, kind of in all the the times we've talked about politics. That's what we keep coming back to. Uh, And I think it's important to remember that going into these conversations, because it can take a little bit of pressure off the conversation, because our hope isn't in convincing someone of a political policy. It's not in convincing them to vote for a specific candidate. Uh, it's, It's in Christ, and that's where our ultimate hope is. And that should give us hope in those conversations because it gives us hope that God is at work in the world. He is working out justice. He is bringing life. Uh, And it should give us hope that we can learn to be more like him and that other people can learn to be more like him in the way that we approach politics. So when you come in with this kind of fixed, cynical uh, idea of how this conversation is going to go, Again, it's very similar to coming in with a very prideful sense of how the conversation should go. It's gonna put the other person off right away. They're gonna be able to feel that you're cynical and that you don't have any real hope in uh, having this conversation with them. And no one really wants to feel that as they're jumping into a conversation with you, especially about something like politics. So hope and humility for ourselves, but also for the ways that it's going to impact our conversation with the other person. The second one is speaking the truth in love. And in this, there's kind of two pieces of it. There's the truth side and there's the love side. So on the truth side, I just wanna encourage you to uh, check your facts. (laughs) I know that sounds silly, but I feel like we've gotten to this point in politics where, um, and just in the way that our media works, where we tend to hear all the things that we want to hear. We're really um, in this kind of echo chamber if we're not careful. And Joel and I just recently watched The Social Dilemma on Netflix. It's kind of a documentary about social media and everything that goes on on the internet. And we're actually gonna have a conversation later uh, at Res City. We're gonna do like a movie night and um, discussion in November. So if you haven't seen it yet, you can save it until then or you can watch it and join us for the discussion. But just really highlights how we often are only getting the information in the news and the sources that we want to hear. And so I just encourage you, again, this is I think part of the humility piece, to check your facts, to make sure that when you're coming into a conversation with someone, especially if it's someone that you want to um, see things differently, it's important to know where you're getting your news sources from and that they are accurate. And then the other piece of it is doing that in love. And I think that really matters probably even more than the truth part of it. And so uh, ways that you can approach people in love, I think one of those things is just assuming the best in the other person. We have a lot of um, preconceptions of if someone believes X, they must believe Y and Z, and they must just be a terrible person. And they must, you know, we just fill in and we kind of go down this line of thinking that puts all this other stuff in um, a category and truly that person may have a much more nuanced belief than you think they do. They might um, have other things in mind. They might have personal experiences that you don't know about that impact how they think about certain things. And so it's helpful to keep all of that in mind and assume the best. Not that you can't challenge um, beliefs or or uh, ideas that people have, but going in thinking that they um, really do believe that what they believe is um, going to help people or is uh, best for our country or best for your neighborhood or whatever it is. Uh, And even if you disagree with them, acknowledging that they are um, coming from a similar place of view of wanting the best for uh, whatever the outcome of this, of whatever political thing you're talking about is. And then I think with that, assuming the best in them, and at the same time, just remembering to give them dignity. Uh, again, like I said, we have this kind of really negative view of other people who don't believe the same thing as us in our culture. That's kind of just accepted, if not encouraged, to have that view of other people. 
But the truth is, is that everyone is made in the image of God and they still have dignity and we should be willing to show them that dignity and show them that they are worth something um, and that they were worth Jesus being willing to die for them. So if you keep that in mind, it's a lot harder to demonize the other person or to assume the worst of them when you remember that they are, are also worthy of love and that they are a human with dignity that is made in the image of God. So that's the idea of speaking the truth in love. And then lastly, the last thing I want to talk about, um, and is honestly probably the hardest thing to do, especially right now, is uh, to not think about winning in these political conversations, but to think about serving. So what does that look like? Uh, I think the idea of not thinking about winning, we really like to have the last word. We really like to feel like we've convinced somebody or that they can understand our beliefs. And I think we have to be willing to give up that uh, desire to have the last word sometimes because sometimes it's not helpful. In fact, sometimes it's more harmful to kind of push for that and to be um, aggressive in, in getting to that point. So I think we have to be willing to give that up. We also have to be willing to acknowledge the good and the truth in the other person's arguments. So, like I said in the very beginning, no political party, no candidate, no policy is perfect. There are always going to be things um, that are good about it, and there are probably always going to be things that are bad about it. And so, when you're willing to acknowledge the good or acknowledge the truth in another person's argument, that can really help a conversation go a lot further because it shows that you're not just there to win your side of the argument, but you're there to actually have a conversation and to really talk things through and get to know uh, what the other person thinks and how you can learn from one another and hopefully challenge and encourage each other in that. So as hard as it is, it's really important to be able to see the good and to acknowledge the truth and in the other person's argument. Even if it's a really small thing, uh, I think being willing to do that is important. And also the last thing I wanna say is just cancel culture. We've talked about it before on Sundays um, and just how it's not a healthy thing for our society. Uh, we need to be able to extend more grace than that. And so I think the idea of not focusing on winning and more focusing on serving is included in not canceling the, the other person just because they don't believe the same thing as you. I'm not saying you have to be best friends with them. I'm not saying you have to agree with them. I'm just saying um, don't write them off as a terrible human. Don't write them off as never wanting to speak to them ever again. Because again, we go back to this idea that everybody has dignity. They're all made in the image of God uh, and everyone's flawed. We're all human. We're all going to make mistakes. And so we need to be able to extend that grace uh, and to not lean into cancel culture in the way that we do that. And I thought I would just quote, uh, end with a um, quote from Matthew 20 or a passage of scripture that kind of talks about this idea of not winning, but of serving. And it's Jesus saying, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So if we want to be Christ-like in this political season, if we want to uh, integrate our faith with our politics well and live out this idea of kingdom politics, we have to be willing to serve other people and not expect to be served. And I think that includes being okay with not winning arguments, um, being okay with not being 100% understood, or being okay with knowing that this is going to be a process. And sometimes conversations like these take a long period of time to kind of come back to and to continue working through to understand one another to be on the same page um, and just to yeah be able to have those political conversations in a constructive way uh, for your relationship so as I said at the very beginning this is stuff that I feel like I'm still learning myself and I'm still working on practicing especially this political season so if you ever have any questions further or you want to talk more about it feel free to submit more questions um, you can go to residentychurch.org it's just on our main page you'll, you'll see it you'll see the kingdom politics logo and you can submit a question and next Thursday at 4 Joel will be on Instagram live and he will be able to answer any or respond to any of your further questions. 
Um, and yeah, we hope to see you on Sunday, uh, whether that's in person or virtually. Uh, we meet on, at 9.30 a.m. In person, we'll be at the Knox International Center in St. Paul. And online, you can find us on YouTube. Uh, you can also get the link from our website to get to YouTube. So we hope to see you and we are praying for you during this uh, election season. Thanks everyone for coming by. We'll see you next time.